Children in the care of the local authority, referred to as looked after children, are less likely to do well and more likely to have health and social problems. In Coventry, the good news is our looked after children are doing well compared to the rest of England for their reading, writing and maths and we are ranked 10th best in the country for this. We are still behind the rest of the country though for GCSE results. Our ambition is to support our looked after children to do their best and reach their goals. Well, I was in care from the age of 10 right up until the age of 18. Um, sadly, I got taken off my parents at the age of 10 because they couldn't cope for whatever reason. Um, I then moved into my first foster carers, which from my side, it was quite hard to adjust. Um, and it was sort of a bit, bit of backwards and forwards, bit of, bit of both really. Um, and then I went to my second carers and I thought they were absolutely brilliant. Like, they helped me in every way that they could, like, give me any support that I asked for, even if it just meant, like, a shoulder to lean on. Do you know what I mean? They were there for me. Well, the support I've had is, I mean, get, getting through college um, or getting a job, you know, like, from me, because I have certain problems, I don't understand as much as what other people might do. Um, so those people were there to show me what I had to do to gain access to college, to pass my grades, to give me the advice and the support that I would need to see me through my life. My aspiration, um, that's hard, that's hard. I've, I've had so many, it's, it's hard to decipher, but right now I think trying to get my SOA badge. That, that's my one dream at the minute. If I can do that, then yeah, I'll be happy. Um, I started being a, a looked after child when I was five. I had three foster parents. Um, foster care for me was a positive experience because it's helped me to get where I am now and it's made me think of what job I'd like in the future. My hopes and dreams for the future is to work with children that have just come into care and they struggle with their schoolwork. Uh, Voices of Care is a council-run programme um, who specialises in any type of range dealing with young people, uh, care leavers, um, people who are still with their own families um, and we essentially give them a voice. Being in Voices of Care has made me achieve quite a few potentials that uh, I probably wouldn't have got uh, without yourselves. Like, it's sort of been a second family to me really. Like, I know that if I ever need anyone to lean on and I haven't got anyone else, I can just come straight to Voices of Care. Children with disabilities or those with special educational needs will need extra support if they are to become independent adults and succeed in life. In Coventry, children with special educational needs and disabilities are doing well in their GCSEs. Our ambition is to support every child with a disability to fulfil their potential. This is Limerick Wood Centre, this is our base, um, hopefully to be a hub for children uh, birth to four with special educational needs, children who are diagnosed with a condition or who aren't meeting their developmental targets. That is what we're about really, the aspiration is that all children can have some mainstream experience, even the children with the most complex needs. There are very few children who, because of their medical needs, can't access mainstream provision. We, we, we will leave targets for parents and things for them to work on so they have short-term goals and long-term goals and those are discussed with parents and that's part of the whole portage approach and it is about empowering parents yeah. you know to be able to a parent to be able to say to a parent look your child can do this you can do this with your child they're not just going to sit there and do nothing for the next however many years you know you can enjoy your child Joe's a happy content little boy he has cerebral palsy, epilepsy, um, obviously he, he tries his best, like he can roll around, um, can't keep him still. A year ago he couldn't even eat, so, and now he's eating everything. 
So, you know, he surprises us. And that's what he's going to do in the future. He's going to surprise us. And we're never going to say he's never going to be able to do something. Well, he's been coming to Limbit Wood for about two and a half years now, maybe a bit longer. He's just basically coming in and, you know, they just talk to us and show us new things. And, into, yeah, like other parents that have got children like this. Um, if you ever got any concerns or anything, you can come here and ask them. Um, there's all sorts, and it's like having a friend that you can come and talk to. My hopes are for the best for him in life. I just want the best. You know, as long as he's happy, that's all that matters. You know, I still love him no matter what. Noah was born 10 weeks early um, and deprived of oxygen for a long time at birth. Um, he's got severe brain damage and cerebral palsy, um, but it requires a lot of kind of help and support off me. Without them, really, I would have been stuck. I get great support off them. Um, and he, he loves them as well. So my hopes and aspirations for Noah are that he does obviously really well at school. I'm hoping that he'll go to mainstream school, um, but it just depends how he develops.